I'm a sick man. I love him. Mom, I love him. And he is actually, well, he was. He is dead. Rip. Um, <laughs> these next two books I got because Barnes & Noble tricked me. <laughs> I feel so smart. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have too many of these moments where I'm like, wow, my brain actually works. I can't believe my brain did that. Like, guess who just came back from a trip to New York City, the Big Apple. And she didn't come back empty handed. No, she did not. Um, I came back with some books. I came back with a total of eight new books, even though technically I am on a book buying ban, but let's not talk about that. And let's not talk about how, <laughs> how I just completely ignored that on my five day trip to New York City. Hello, my friends. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for wanting to be here. I know you're just as excited as me to see all of the new books that I've added to my collection. And I do have one very special book that I actually have no idea what it is because this bad boy, I picked up on the Strand. They had like this section, which was a blind date with a book. And there were just a bunch of wrapped books with just a few hints here and there of what the book could be. And I picked this one up because recently I've just been loving the horror genre and as soon as I saw this, this was the last one left of its kind and I was like, I cannot let this moment, this opportunity go by without grabbing one for myself. Literally the last one. So I'm excited to open this on camera because I literally have zero um ideas of what this could be the only thing that i hope is that this is not an eric laraca collection because i have read some of his collected stories and if this is things have gotten worse since we last spoke or if this is the trees grew because i bled there i've already read those so i'm hoping this isn't eric laraca but if it is i wouldn't be too mad about it because i actually loved those two stories or those two books i think i'm going to be leaving this for last just because you know the intrigue the mystery i need you guys to stick here until the end otherwise what is the point <laughs> so yeah i'm very excited about this one but apart from these eight new books i also have some book mail that i thought would be fun to open together the one package that i do recognize is this little bad boy this cute little envelope because it is from one of my favorite bookmark bookmarks shop if you're in the mood to expand your bookmark collection and if you're in the need for some cool bookmarks i would actually really recommend moon chips and there's actually a code that you can use if you feel up to it i'm going to be leaving it down below and also on screen if it tickles your fancy this is your warning to prepare for valerie and i to kidnap you when 10 wavy tour <laughs> um you know what i'll 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 keep this and I hope you guys keep that promise because if I ever get to see 10 live, I might be able to die happy. But anyways, I am very excited for this. I love that she adds stickers. They're not related to the bookmarks that I got, but I just love these stickers so much. And yes, it's, it's the little things, honestly. Okay, but let's see the new bookmarks. Oh, okay, 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 so listen. I got this Gojo bookmark and if you remember I do have a Gojo bookmark already but listen this is my truth the thing is um I lost my Gojo bookmark I know disgusting electric chair bombastic side eye I know I should not be alive right now like how dare I lose my Gojo bookmark I know that it's in a book I just don't know which one um, so I just went ahead and got another one because you know I get to support a small business and now I'm the owner of two Gojo bookmarks One of which is lost, but we will not talk about that And then the other bookmark that I got is my new favorite obsession Look at her. Just look at her. How could I not get this one? It's just everything that I've ever wanted She's perfect. She's glorious. I love her Oh my goodness I had to get these. These make me so happy and my bookmark collection has never looked better. So yeah, these are my two new bookmarks. Once again, use the code or just don't use the code at all. As long as you support a small business and as long as you support a very talented sis, be a good dude and get some new bookmarks. Let's continue with this one. Again, no clue. Where is it from? Oh, it's from Canada. Okay. We love Canada in this household. <laughs> I've actually never gone to Canada, but I'm hoping to change that in the near future. So fingers crossed, one day I'll get to see Canada. 
Oh, okay. So this is the Kite Runner by Khalid Hosseini. Hosseini? Khalid Hosseini? And I remember somebody telling me that I was going to love the Kite Runner. And maybe it's the same person <laughs> that just decided to send me a copy as well. Wait, there's no note? How am I supposed to thank you if there's no note? Oh no, oh, there's a note. Okay, there we go. Hi there, I watch your channel and you mentioned in one of your comments that you have not read The Kite Runner. Here's a copy for you and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. It's a profound story of the human condition, guilt and redemption. It made me think about what we could be capable of, what we can make ourselves believe and how darkness can emerge in all of us if given the circumstances. I'm hooked, oh my goodness, okay. Anyways, it's an emotional journey towards redemption and freedom from the past. I don't want to hype it up too much, too late. I've had friends who hated this book and couldn't see past the actions of the character. But to me, it was a deep look into human nature and the darkness that may exist in all of us and how redemption is possible. Enjoy and keep up the good work on your channel, Tina. Tina? Oh my god, my dude. Thank you so much. I know you said that you didn't want to hype it up too much, but I'm literally sold. I already feel like I'm going to love this book just because of the way that you described it. It just sounds beautiful and I actually really enjoy reading from morally gray characters or morally ambiguous characters. So I think I'm going to really enjoy this book actually. Thank you so much for taking it upon yourself to add this book into my collection and ensuring that I will read it. Oh my god. I am very excited. Thank you so much for thinking of me, for wanting to send me this copy. Maybe I should read this in June. And it's not as, oh, it's blurbed by Isabel Allende. Unforgettable, extraordinary, powerful. Oh wow, okay, if Isabel Allende approves, even though I haven't read a single book by her, but I just know that my mom loves her, I guess, I mean, it's a yes for me. Thank you so much, Tina. Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. That means I have nine new books in my collection. We have one final box before I get into the eight books that I bought in New York City. So without further ado, let's see what's inside this box. I just saw the Funko Pop logo. I don't know which Funko Pop. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. I know I haven't been the most active on Discord lately. Insert Mariah Carey. I can't read. <laughs> But thank you for putting so much work into creating fun reading challenges and creating such a lovely community from Mandy. Oh, Mandy. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, okay. Can you guys see? I cannot see. <gasps> Not me standing up as if that would make me see it better. Okay, is this Nesuko? Oh my God, it's Nesuko. Oh my god, look at her, shut up. Oh my god, it's Nesuko. Okay, look, look at her, look. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Oh my goodness, wait. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh, Tanjiro has been so lonely in the Demon Slayer shelf and he no longer has to be, thanks to Mandy. Do not fall, okay, look at her. Look at her. Isn't she the best thing you've seen in your life? Oh my goodness, Mandy, thank you so much for this. I am going to cherish this with my life and I'm going to cherish your note even more. Thank you so much for this, oh my goodness. You totally did not have to. We will be there even if you're not reading. It's okay, we'll be waiting for you. <laughs> oh my God, Nesuko is gorgeous. You're gorgeous, baby. Oh my God, she is such a slay. <laughs> I was not expecting to be getting a Nesuko Funko Pop, a copy of The Kite Runner. I mean, I was expecting the bookmarks, but yes, I was not expecting such wonderful gifts. So thank you so much to Tina and Mandy for thinking of me and making my day. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you're watching, um, hopefully you're watching. <laughs> Let's get into the eight books that I picked up on my trip to New York City. The first one is actually a gift. And I actually met one of you guys, well, one of my Patreons on my trip to New York City. We spent the day just exploring bookstores. We did an escape room. It was really fun. We also ate some really good cookies. 
it was a really wonderful day. Liv, if you're watching this, I hope you had as much fun as I did. And Liv actually ended up gifting me this book, which is called Remarkably Bright Creatures, written by Shelby Van Pelt. I actually started reading this book that same day, and I only made it to page 32, but from what I've read, it's a pretty interesting story. We're following this old lady who has recently lost her son and also her husband. So she's been dealing with a lot of emotions of grief and loneliness and trying to just get used to this new era of her life. And you know, it's been really hard on her, but she does have this job as a janitor in an aquarium. And in this specific aquarium, we have a very interesting octopus in our midst. And this octopus, he likes to be a little bit of a trickster. It's very interesting because we actually get a few chapters from his point of view and it's surprisingly very funny. Being inside of this octopus's mind and seeing how he sees the world and how he tries to make sense of what's going on and basically at night he likes to get out of his tank to get some real food because what he's being fed it's just not enough and he just wants to get more food but in one of his nightly escapades he actually meets with this old lady which i think her name is tova yeah tova and so ensues a very interesting relationship between both of them again i haven't read that many pages so i don't really know what this story is about but i'm thinking that it's going to be a lot of soul searching and a very emotional type of story my friend liv actually said that it reminded her of anxious people by frederick bachman which is a five star book for me so i am very very excited to continue reading this one remark why is that word so hard for me to say Remark Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, one of the books that I got on my trip to New York City. And then the next book that I got was Mary Oliver's Devotions. I've been eyeing this book for a very long time. I've been hearing booktuber after booktuber just raving about the beauty of this book. And it's basically just a collection of poems by Mary Oliver. I've never read anything by Mary Oliver, but I have seen Quite a lot of you guys actually recommending Mary Oliver to me. I actually got in The Strand and I'm very confused as to how I found it. Let me explain. There are eight miles of books and I don't like for some reason that sounded like a small number to me but when you're actually inside the strand you get so overwhelmed by the amount of books that there are that it's almost like hard to find books because you're seeing so many books everywhere your mind can't really focus on one section or just one book because there's so much to see you don't want to miss it i'm honestly so surprised that i actually found this book because i wasn't even looking for it like in the back of my mind i was hoping to find it someday before I left but when I was searching through the strand and then I saw this very white spine in the middle of a lot of beige and dark colored spines I was like that cannot be Mary Oliver's devotions it would be like too perfect if that book was devotions but when I got closer and I saw that it was the book that I've been searching for I don't it felt like fate. It would be an insult to Destiny herself if I did not buy this book. So of course I got it because yes, I'm holding it in my hands and I am very excited to read this, obviously. Like if I weren't excited, I wouldn't have gotten it, but you get what I mean. Within these pages, she provides us with an extraordinary and invaluable collection of her passionate, perceptive, and much treasured observations of the natural world. I mean, I'm hooked. Me, I'm a nature girly for sure. <laughs> I have picked a random poem and I'm just going to read it to you to just get a taste of what Mary Oliver sounds like, what she likes to write about. So this poem is called, I have just said, I have just said something ridiculous to you. And in response, your glorious laughter. These are the days the sun is swimming back to the east and the light on the water gleams as never it seems before. I can't remember every spring. I can't remember everything. So many years are the morning kisses the sweetest or the evenings or the in-betweens. All I know is that thank you should appear somewhere. So just in case I can't find the perfect place, thank you, thank you. Okay, that is, <laughs> that is very heartwarming actually. Now I just wanna stop this video and read more poems, but I will not do that because you guys come first. 
Mary Oliver, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this next one is actually one of the 23 books that I wanted to read before 2023 ends, and that is In the Dream House, written by Carmen Maria Machado. I started this in the airport because my flight got delayed, and I actually ended up reading 60% of the book because it was just so beautiful, but so heart-wrenching. Like, it was so hard to read at times. And yes, I did cry in the airport. I'm not proud about that, but I also, you know, I'm not ashamed to show my emotions when a book is just hitting me where it hurts. So basically, in the dream house, oh, I finished this book. <laughs> My flight kept on getting delayed, so I just ended up reading more and more pages until there were no more left. So yes, I did end up finishing in the dream house. I read it all on my Kindle, so I still have to pass all of my annotations into my physical copy. But oh my goodness, in the dream house. I don't know if I'm going to be giving it a 4.5 or a 5 star. I still need to sit on my emotions and my feelings for a little longer. In the Dream House is actually a memoir and in it, our author Carmen Maria Machado is relating to us one of the most horrifying experiences that she's ever had to live through and that is her very, very toxic relationship with her ex-partner. And yeah it was just very harrowing there are some scenes that were just hard to read because the abuse that she had to live through and the ways that she had to cope the ways that she gaslit herself into thinking that this was normal because she had never seen anybody else talk about it it's one of these taboo topics that so many people are afraid to even mention to even hint at so she felt very alone in this experience and she thought that you know, this is just what life is supposed to feel like. You know, it's totally normal to wake up afraid and it's totally normal to seek out every exit every time that you enter a new room just in case things go wrong. It's just all of the things and all of the little details and descriptions that Carmen Maria Machado gives us and like this insight into her life and her very, very toxic relationship with this woman. It's devastating and it's heartbreaking and the way, oh my God, this book was just, yeah, I, of course I'm struggling talking about this book because I loved it so much and those are the books that I struggle to talk about the most, so hey, yay me. In the Dream House, Carmen Maria Machado, a revolutionary memoir. I have never been the same after reading this book and I will scream my recommendation of this book from the rooftops. Like, I need everybody to read this book. But of course, please be aware of the trigger warnings because there is quite a lot of abuse. Not that much physical, even though there are some instances of physical abuse, but it's all more so psychological and emotional. So, so do with that what you will. <laughs> These next two books I got because Barnes & Noble tricked me. <laughs> As soon as you walk into this specific Barnes & Noble, they have this section that's like get one, get 50% off on another book and of course, I immediately went to that section and I got two books because that is what you do when you see a 50% off sticker. Yeah, so I got these two books. <laughs> the first book that I got in Barnes & Noble was The Stranger written by Albert Camus. He's French, so I'm guessing that the S at the end of his last name is not pronounced, but I could be wrong about this. I'm going with my gut, Albert Camus. So there we go, The Stranger. I've been seeing this everywhere for a pretty long while and I've heard some really incredible things and it's also pretty short. So I just got it because why not? I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be regretting this. Do I know what this book is about? Not particularly, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to enjoy it. I already know I'm going to enjoy it because I know myself and there's just something about this book, like the vibe that it gave me, the energy that it's just exuding. I, I think I will relate. I think I will enjoy. I think I will learn something from this book. I think I will take something away from it. It has to be good because I think it's going to be good. So this book cannot let me down. Through this story of an ordinary man who unwittingly gets drawn into a senseless murder on a sun-drenched Algerian beach, Camus explored what he terms the nakedness of man faced with the absurd. I'm so sorry, doesn't that sound so good? Like, bestie, come on. <laughs> I'm so sorry, um, yeah. Hey, Albert Camus was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1957. I haven't had 
I haven't had the best luck with Nobel Prize books. Authors that have won the Nobel Prize for literature, the books that I've read by them, I haven't had the best luck, but I hope that that is not going to deter me from enjoying this book to its fullest. Again, this only has like 123 pages. Literally 123 pages, hey. I just feel like, you know what I mean? Like, come on now. Let's read the first sentence and see how we feel. My mom died today. It's a winner. It's a winner for me or yesterday maybe. I don't know. Listen, okay, let's continue. <laughs> I got a telegram from the home. Mother diseased, funeral tomorrow, faithfully yours. That doesn't mean anything. Maybe it was yesterday. Okay, so we have a dead mom. We have a son that doesn't really care, which is great. I love, I love that. <laughs> sure i'm just really hoping that i enjoy this one because i've been meaning to read this one since i think maybe last year so i'm just staying optimistic i'm keeping an open mind i'm just hoping to enjoy this book as much as i can so the stranger by oliver camus if anybody has read this please let me know what you thought because i would love to hear your opinion i do trust you guys so if you feel like i would enjoy this you're 95% of the time correct, so I would bet on you. And then the other book that I got on the 50% offer was Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. I have heard so many things about this book and I have read one other book by Virginia Woolf, which is The Waves. I really connected with that story and it had so many beautiful quotes. The prose is something that I really connected with and I really love how Virginia Woolf writes characters and a lot of her narrative is mostly just stream of consciousness like you just have to go along with it you just need to kind of jump into the river of virginia wolves writing and let yourself be pulled wherever it is that it's going to take you like you just need to accept that sometimes you're going to be confused and sometimes you're going to have to reread certain parts to see if you truly understand what happened i kind of really like that i like books that challenge me and i like books that keep me on my toes um so i am really excited to read this because what i've read or what i've heard of a room of one's own is that this is basically what would happen if shakespeare actually had a sister and the sister is just as talented if not even more talented than shakespeare himself but because she is a woman she doesn't get the same opportunities that he did because of the time that this book takes place in i could be incorrect though <laughs> In A Room of One's Own, Virginia Woolf imagines that Shakespeare had a sister. Hey, there we go. A sister equal to Shakespeare in talent and equal in genius, but whose legacy is radically different. This imaginary woman never writes a word and dies by her own hand. Hello, spoiler. <laughs> if only she had found the means to create, argues Woolf, she would have reached the same heights as her immortal sibling. In this classic essay, Wolf takes on the establishment, using her gift of language to dissect the world around her and give voice to those who are without. Her message is a simple one. Women must have a steady income and a room of their own in order to have the freedom to create. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> no, no, oh my goodness. This is impossible to read. I'm so sorry. Who thought that this typography and this space between the lines would be correct. This is so hard. This is really hard for my eyes to read. Oh no, what have I done? Okay, no, it's fine. I just need to get used to it. I just need to get used to it. <laughs> I, yeah, this is good. This is fine. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. Should we read the first sentence? But you may say, we asked you to speak about women in fiction. What has that got to do with A Room of One's Own? I will try to explain. Okay, sure. I love when a woman, I period, yeah, I love when a woman. When you asked me to speak about women in fiction, I sat down on the banks of a river and began to wonder what the words meant. They might mean simply a few remarks about Fanny Burney, a few more about Jane Austen, some witticisms, if possible, about Miss Mitford, a respectful allusion to George Eliot, a reference to Miss Gaskell, and one would have done. But at second sight, the words seemed not so simple. The title women and fiction might mean, and you may have meant it to mean, women and what they are like, or it might mean women and the fiction that they write, or it might mean women and the fiction that is written about them, 
or it might mean that somehow all three are inextricably mixed together and you want me to consider them in that light. I'm so sorry, but I love that. Oh my goodness. I love that so much. Oh my God, okay. Okay, I was about to read the whole chapter. I'm so sorry, but A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, a feminist essay about Shakespeare's sister, maybe. That's kind of the premise that I have going on right now. I don't want to know more. This next book caught me completely by surprise. I was not expecting to find this, but this has been on my wish list ever since I read a certain new favorite classic. And when I saw this singular copy, literally the only copy that they had in that bookstore, I was like, this is fate. Like once again, the same thing that happened with Mary Oliver's devotions, I could not let this moment pass by, this opportunity, this once in a lifetime opportunity. So when I saw Notes from the Underground and The Double by Fyodor Dostoevsky, I was like, I cannot let you slip away from my fingers. I need to own you immediately. And the fact that it's a Penguin Edition classic, like it just, it felt like fate. It felt like this book was sent directly to me. So yeah, I got it. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't have a good experience with the Brothers Karamazov, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to keep having more experiences from Dostoevsky. I have seen a lot of you guys recommending notes from the underground to me, even though I didn't enjoy the Brothers Karamazov. So I've been really interested in picking this one up. I don't know what it is about Dostoevsky, but I just keep wanting more. Like I want to learn more about him. I want to read everything that he has ever written. I don't know, he's cast a spell on me from beyond the grave and even though I didn't like one of his books, maybe I'll like the rest of them. Like I don't wanna give up on him just because of one bad book, in my opinion. <laughs> when I saw this in the bookstore, I was like, you're coming home with me, baby and nobody can stop me. <laughs> Alienated from society and paralyzed by a sense of his own insignificance, that is me, the anonymous narrator of Dostoevsky's Notes from the Underground tells the story of his tortured life. With bitter irony, he describes his refusal to become a worker in the ant hill and his gradual withdrawal from society. The seemingly ordinary world of St. Petersburg takes on a nightmarish quality in the double when a government clerk encounters a man who looks exactly like him. His double, perhaps, or possibly the darker side of his own personality. <gasps> That's good. Ooh, okay. Okay. I didn't know that about the double, okay. Like notes from the underground, this is a masterly tragic comic study of human consciousness. And this was only $14, so like, come on now. <laughs> Let's read the first sentence because I already wanna read the whole thing. I'm a sick man. I love him. Mom, I love him. I'm a sick man. I'm a spiteful man. I'm an unattractive man. I think there's something wrong with my liver, but I understand damn all about my illness and I can't say for certain which part of me is affected. I'm not receiving treatment for it and never have, although I do respect medicine and doctors. What's more, I'm still extremely superstitious. Well, sufficiently to respect medicine. I'm educated enough not to be superstitious, but I am superstitious. Oh no, I'm refusing treatment out of spite. That's something you probably can't bring yourself to understand. Well, I understand it. Of course, in this case, I can't explain exactly to you whom I'm trying to harm by my spite. I realize perfectly well that I cannot besmirch the doctors by not consulting them. I know better than anyone that by all this, I'm harming no one but myself. All the same, if I refuse to have treatment, it's out of spite. So if my liver hurts, let it hurt even more. Not me reading the whole page, I'm so sorry, but I was so engrossed in that paragraph. Like the one way to get me to focus on a story is to give me a despicable man and just trying to understand him, man or woman, you know, like either way or neither also. That could be interesting. But yes, Notes from the Underground and The Double by Baby Dostoevsky. I can't believe I just called him baby. There we go. Anyways, <laughs> that's how I'm doing. <laughs> the next book that I got. This one is an interesting story because I had no idea that this book existed. I saw it for the very first time in the first bookstore that we visited on my trip to New York City. And then after that bookstore, it seemed like I was seeing it everywhere. And it turns out that this book is actually banned. So like bonus points for that. It's apparently a very, existential novel it focuses on this man i haven't even shown you the book oh my goodness okay 
<laughs> Sorry, fog brain. Anyways, the book that I got was Nausea. Nausea. I actually don't like the word nausea. Nausea in English because I don't exactly know how to pronounce it. It just sounds very weird when I say it like nausea. Nausea? Nausea. Nausea. Why can't it just be with the S? Okay, nausea. I'm just gonna say it in Spanish because I feel more comfortable with that. Let me just start over. Okay, the next book that I got was Nausea, written by John Paul Sartre, and he is actually, well, he was, he is dead. Rip. Um, <laughs> Sartre was actually a very famous philosopher and this is his very first novel and it is considered a French classic and I think I initially went to it because it just looked really interesting and because I have been meaning to read a book by Sartre before I didn't know that it was going to be Nausea but here we are Let me just read you the blurb that is the thing that actually convinced me to buy this book Nausea is the story of a French writer who is horrified at his own existence I mean come on, how can you not want to read this book after that sentence? Like I need it, like I need it, you know what I mean? Like I need it <laughs> Nausea is considered a landmark in existentialism fiction and a key work of the 20th century. I just, I had to. And also in that bookstore, they actually had stamps and I got to stamp my book and I just love it. You know, I love when bookstores just have like quirks, just have like things, you know what I mean? Like very underrated. Monday, the 29th of January, 1932. Something has happened to me. I can't doubt it anymore. It came as an illness to us, not like an ordinary certainty, not like anything evident. It came cunningly, little by little. I felt a little strange, a little put out, that's all. Once established, it never moved, it stayed quiet, and I was able to persuade myself that nothing was the matter with me, that it was a false alarm. And now, it's blossoming. Okay. Okay. The thing is that I rarely think. A crowd of small metamorphoses accumulate in me without my noticing it. And then, one fine day, a veritable revolution takes place. This is what has given my life such a jerky and coherent aspect. I am hooked, your honor. Hooked! <sighs> Nausea, John Paul Sartre. I am so excited. Yes, maybe I should rank these books in the order of which I am most excited to read them. Oh my god, okay, wait, okay. Before I can do that though, we have this. My friend Shelby, who was also in New York City with me, she wanted me to open this so desperately, but I was like, no, I need to open this on camera. I need to open this with my fellow simpers. Like, you know, it has to be a whole moment. And I just, yeah, just know I have waited for this moment just for you guys. So I hope you're as excited as me to find out what this book is. Once again, a few banned horror stories. Oh wait, <gasps> okay, 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 okay. I think something just clicked because I'm seeing the drawing and I'm seeing like, you know, it's people fighting, it's people with fire in their heads. People are rioting. And I remember, maybe this is Shirley Jackson. I did say at the beginning that I hope it's not Eric LaRocca, but now that I've seen this, and there, I literally can't see anything behind this paper. I think, oh my goodness, okay. I of course need to give you guys my predictions because what is a good unboxing if we don't give some predictions? But I think this could be Shirley Jackson, which I would love actually, oh. Wait, it says a few band. Cause the riot gave me We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which I have already read and I did love, but I don't want to own a copy of it because I wouldn't read it again. <laughs> But since it does say a few a few stories, it's not We Have Always Lived in the Castle. But maybe it's Shirley Jackson's The Lottery and other stories. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to shut up and I'm just going to open this. Oh my god. Watch it be... I just really hope it's Shirley Jackson. I really love... I think I broke the book. Hi. Okay, I'm just gonna... You guys can see it before me. Can we... Oh! Wait, maybe I should do this more often. Okay, my final prediction is Shirley Jackson, the lottery and other stories, other collect, I don't know. Oh my God, shut the front door, shut it. Oh my God, it's literally the lottery. I can't believe I actually got that correct. The lottery and other stories. I swear I didn't cheat. Like you can ask my friends, you can ask Liv or Shelby, I did not cheat. Oh my god, I can't believe I actually got this right. I feel 
so smart. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have too many of these moments where I'm like, wow, my brain actually works. I can't believe my brain did that. Like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so proud of myself. Anyway, shut up. The Lottery and Other Stories, introduction by A.M. Holmes, Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson's stories are among the most terrifying ever written by Donna Tartt. Hey girl, <laughs> fancy seeing you here. Dark and nightmarish, Shirley Jackson's short stories represent a singular and ever powerful genre unto themselves. The Lottery remains one of the most terrifying stories ever published, all the more so for its lucid, convincing realism and one of the most controversial. It has become an essential classic of American fiction. This selection of Jackson's stories, the only collection to be published during her lifetime, showcases a true master at the height of her haunting powers. I have actually read The Lottery before, but that is the only short story of Shirley Jackson that I've read, so I am so excited for this. I'm so happy that this is the book that was behind this blind date. I am definitely going to be going on a second date because, I mean, come on, it's Shirley Jackson. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with this reveal. I am literally, no other book would have made me this happy. Yay, we stay winning. These are all of the new books that I got on my trip to New York City, plus the Kite Runner, thank you, Tina. And uh, I am just so happy with this. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, we have to rate them. Wait, okay. My camera is flashing, but I need to do this. So technically I have already read in the dream house, so I'm not going to include it. And this is not from New York City. I think, no. Okay. <laughs> this is my rating of how excited I am. Again, I am excited for every single one of these books, but this is like, if I had to rank them in order of least excited to most excited, this is my rating or my ranking, not my rating. So there you go. Do with this what you will. <laughs> This was very unnecessary, but I love ranking things, so there we go. Yeah, my book collection is looking scrumptious. She has never been happier. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps my channel out, and it helps me keep doing what I love doing, which is making these videos for you guys. I also have a Patreon where I post exclusive content. I host monthly book clubs and reading sprints and all of the beautiful things. So if that's something that you would be interested in, the link is down below as always. I would love to have you join my army of premium simpers. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey Jimmy, you nice, keep going.